thanks everyone for joining us today. Um, this is our second all community call uh, quarterly. Um, we have you were there a couple of months ago. Last time we announced uh, our uh, you know big announcement of joining the Linux Foundation. Um, we are looking to make this uh, a, a periodic update and really a, a venue to meet with the community. So I think I'm, I'm really excited today that we're going to hear not just from the Finos team, but actually from uh, our contributors uh, uh, who are leading some of the most interesting projects that we have in Finos. Um, so first of all, thank you to each one of you for being here and thank you to our project leads uh, uh, for uh, uh, being available to provide an update. Um, so the, the agenda is pretty uh, standard. Uh, uh, I'm gonna give a quick uh, update on the state of the community and where we're going for the rest of the year. Um, there's a huge opportunity, uh, we think, uh, with open sourcing financial services this year. Uh, and so I wanna outline where we are uh, putting our focus. Uh, talking about focus, as you might remember, earlier in the year we introduced the concept of focus projects, um, which allows us, you know, out of the over 100 projects that we have in the foundation to really hone in on five or six projects every quarter and help as much as possible progress to deliver value and really produce valuable releases out there. And finally, a little bit of a roundup uh, around uh, some of the community and governance uh, initiatives uh, between me and James who will provide a, a quick update and hopefully uh, keep the questions at the end. But I, you know, I would encourage you if there's a really important question to uh, just jump in or put it in the chat and we'll be able to go through it uh, at the end. Uh, Great, so um, before we, we jump in, um, you know, I wanted to acknowledge uh, the very particular situation that we're all living out there. Um, I think, um, you know, especially here in the US, we went through, uh, we are going through uh, some, I think very much needed changes. I wanted to remind everyone that Finos is a welcoming environment uh, for everyone. I, I personally think open source can provide, uh, you know, a level playing field in, in ways that very uh, few other uh, modes of collaboration can. Um, so please make sure that you help us, uh, uh, you know, keeping this community a welcoming environment for everyone. Um, if you are subscribed to the newsletter, uh, you've seen we've sent a reminder to keep an eye on the code of conduct. Um, and, you know, moving forward, um, as you know, we've had uh, our goals for diversity in our programs for a, for a long time. Um, we will, uh, uh, I think it's time to make sure that we, we, we achieve those goals and we'd love to uh, uh, work with you to, to get there. So again, please make sure that we, we keep our community uh, a safe space for everyone. Moving on. Um, so much happened in, in 2020 already, um, despite as, as, as I imagine uh, many of you are at a home, uh, the, the, the flow of time is a little bit bent. Uh, 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 by this quarantine, but when we look back, so much already happened this year. Uh, we welcome three new members, uh, Itau, Adaptive, and Genesis, uh, and you know, we have a really strong pipeline for the rest of the year. Um, we announced the merger with the Linux Foundation. I'll give you a quick update on that in the next slide. Um, of course, we transitioned uh, a lot of our, you know, uh, um, engagement opportunities to online uh, vehicles. So we have now weekly meetups, we have this uh, quarterly call ongoing, we have weekly stream of blogs and newsletters. In fact, make sure uh, in the first page I have uh, collected some call to action for you folks. Make sure that you are subscribed uh, to our lists and to our uh, uh, publications uh, as otherwise you might miss very important information. Um, but I think the most important angle and what we're going to focus on today is that we are seeing now uh, 
constant organic stream of projects being contributed to fitness and increasingly projects that solve uh, potential uh, uh, you know pan industry issues um, i think i'm pretty proud uh, uh, that we're seeing actually financial institutions uh, increasingly uh, uh, taking the lead in contributing this is a you know i think a stark change for what we've seen uh, in the early days of the foundations uh, and i think one that will ensure you know, really longevity uh, to all our initiatives. So I want to send a shout out to Deutsche Bank for doing the second main contribution. Waltz will hear uh, from David, the project lead today. Um, big shout out to Citi uh, as they have completed their first major contribution, a synthetic data, uh, data hub project. And of course, even though it's not a bank, a shout out to ChartaQ uh, who contributed the secure electron adapter earlier in the year. Um, in addition to that, we have the Alloy project, which you know uh, uh, has been announced uh, last year and is now, now running several pilots. You hear about more uh, about that a little more from Aitana uh, um, in terms of the plans and, and what's going to happen with that project. And our projects continue through sort of maturing, like FTC3 released a new standard. Uh, we have the reference implementation out there, an agent, uh, um, as well as perspective became active. So again, we uh, uh, might be apart, but open source continues to uh, deliver. And actually, I would say my hope is that we we see an acceleration this summer. So uh, that brings us to uh, 34 members. Uh, uh, almost 40 projects between incubating and active. Uh, uh, I think, again, we will see these numbers continue to go up throughout the year. Uh, and so I want to thank all of you for believing in, in FINOS and the power of open source collaboration in this industry. So one thing I want to uh, share with you, and uh, hopefully we're going to do this every quarter and see this, uh, continue growing, but this is our overall uh, uh, contribution snapshot uh, um, at this point in time in the community. If you're not familiar with it, we have a community dashboard on metrics.pinos.org where you can go and have a look. Um, my goal is to uh, uh, really uh, uh, continue to see this line uh, growing. And I think if you look at the trends, uh, uh, you know, we are right now experiencing uh, sort of coming back from Christmas uh, still, the, 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 the sort of post Christmas dip. Uh, it's been a little bit harder to recover from given, I think everyone uh, uh, attention being heavily focused on COVID over the last few months. Um, but that's where over summer, that's where we see the biggest spikes. So my hope is that each one of you Hopefully, we'll pick a project this summer to contribute to, and we can see, again, uh, our contributions go up uh, uh, above and beyond uh, what we reached last summer. Um, a quick update on the Linux Foundation. I'm already two minutes over my time. Um, we are working really hard to complete the transition and make sure that this is not having any impact on the day-by-day -day operation of the community. Um, the goal is to close the transaction at the end of this month. We are consolidating, uh, repapering all the members into the new entity that we live under the Linux Foundation. And the target is to have our first governing board meeting uh, of the new Finos directed fund under the Linux Foundation meet uh, in July. So that's really when we can start I wouldn't say start, but beginning the operational phase of the migration. We've done a lot of preparation, uh, a lot of investigation on how to best merge our infrastructures and again, adding value to the community as you'll hear uh, in the next slides. Um, but really it's gonna be throughout H2 that you'll see many more of both infrastructure and uh, again, existing services that the Linux Foundation offers surface uh, uh, to the community. Um, finally, I've shown this slide in our previous call. Uh, this is really a plug 
uh, to say that A, we are working on uh, updated landscape of our projects. Um, you'll hear more about that as we have these banded programs. Um, soon we will have to get your feedback and your help. Once we have a V1, we'll be circulated with you folks. But the second point is have a look at other Linux Foundation projects because there's a lot of opportunity for collaboration. We are seeing potential for upstream, downstream collaboration with Hyperledger, uh, with Electron, of course. Um, so in case you know there's any type of collaboration with these other foundation or projects, please don't hesitate to reach out. We'd be happy to make introductions and explore how we can best work together with other uh, established open source projects. Um, I'm going to close on that just to give you a, a, a snapshot of the initiative that the team is working on above and beyond uh, uh, what you see surfacing in projects. Um, this is really what we use uh, uh, with the board to present our progress uh, it's in terms of the strategic initiatives. Um, the ones that you see in green are completed. We have recently rolled out a new member benefits guide which you can find online and really dis distinguish uh, value for the different tiers of our membership. In the same way we've rolled out the project support guidelines uh, uh, and this framework of focus projects that allow us as a team to really hone in on you know, how do we spend our time uh, 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 on a day-by-day -day basis in supporting our projects and providing a fair framework uh, uh, for everyone. Uh, and of course, we had to respond to COVID-19. That's been uh, a big part of, of at least the first uh, and, and initial part of the second quarter. From an ongoing standpoint, of course, the, the LF merger is going to take some time for us throughout the year. Um, you'll hear it later today how we are cleaning up our governance uh, post-program deprecation. Um, we are working on a training and certification strategy. Rob Underwood is taking the lead from our side there and see how we can leverage the LF infrastructure to provide training and certification capabilities for our projects. Um, so if you have interest in that, please reach out to Rob, uh, whether it is in producing training, delivering training, or taking training. And finally, uh, I think this is going to be a big one moving forward. We have started an initiative on open source financial regulation. Um, it's very early days. We've done a webinar. We've uh, launched a landing page. We think there is a huge potential for collaboration in the regulatory space where, uh, you know, there are typically non-competitive, there's typically non-competitive IP, common requirements. So we really would love your input. And, and if you come across opportunities where you think open source can help uh, implementation, interpretation, uh, and really enforcement, uh, uh, please let us know. And with that, oops, oops, this wasn't supposed to be a build. Sorry about that. Um, I'm going to move to the focus projects, which is, I think, the, the most important part of today's presentation. Um, as I mentioned, throughout the year, at the beginning of the year, we have identified with the board uh, a framework to focus on specific projects uh, on a quarterly basis. The board has deemed for Q2 uh, that there are three focus projects, Alloy, Morphere, and the Initiative on DevOps Mutualization two incubating focus projects, uh, cloud service certification and Waltz project, and then one active uh, focus project. So again, this will be changing on a quarterly basis, and we plan to provide you updates with our progress on a quarterly basis on this project. And so without further ado, I would like to ask Aitana uh, to provide us with an update on the first focus project, the Alloy platform. Sure. Thanks, Gab. So as you all probably know, the Alloy pilot started in December with a preparatory phase, phase zero. We are currently in phase one, the pilot phase that kicked off in January, and we're planning to start phase two in the late summer, which will mark the commencement of the proper fully open source project within FinOps. We've had very active participation, of course, from Goldman, ISTE, and GitLab, so we're very thankful for, for their continuous work on the project. And other pilot participants include FinOS members 
Deutsche Bank, Itau, RBC, Morgan Stanley, Scott Logic, Wells Fargo, and City. And I hope I didn't leave anyone out. Um, and today I'm covering for Rob, who leads this project, this project on the finance side. And I'll give an update on the progress the Alloy working groups have made. And then I'll talk about how we'll get from here to the actual open sourcing. So pilot participants are collaborating on two working groups. The first one is focusing on FX options. And they've used Alloy Studio to model various barrier-related features and submitted two changes to the FX options CDM model, which was one of the milestones at the first stage of this uh, working group's plan. They're currently exploring life cycles and relevant events associated with vanilla option scenarios. And a third stage will be diving into more exotic use cases and features, which is what they'll be working on from now until mid-August. The, the group recently had some separate discussions with the Securities Reference Data Project regarding standardization of currency data and exploring the creation of a reference database solution for currency data. So stay tuned for any forthcoming news on that collaboration. And now on to the other working group, the Commodity Reference Data Working Group is looking at two different angles. One is to establish commodities reference data model in Alloy, and the second angle is to create a commodities payout within the, the ISTA architecture. Uh, the initial work was to review a vanilla use case of a single period fixed float swap scenario, which is now being extended to uh, multiple periods. And there's also been discussions around qualifier functions in the CDM. And again, what's fantastic here is that this working group is also providing a very good test of the overall key goal of the pilot phase, which is to establish that not only can we use Alloy to collaborate among different institutions, but also that we can take what's developed in Alloy and submit it back into a, a, a standards body. In this case, it's the CDM. There has also been a, a proposal spearheaded by Wells Fargo and Itau to set up a third working group around sustainability. And together with a set of other member banks, the group started exploring business use cases and desired goals of, of member organizations around sustainability. Um, they also discussed carbon credits, carbon accounting, and it is still to be defined whether this group is going to end up being a project by itself or if they're going to use Alloy, but please reach out if you'd like to join this conversation. And finally, looking at next steps, we've made good progress on defining the roadmap for Alloy. We're working with Goldman, and we've now um, got a high-level work plan that we will be publishing soon on the Alloy documentation side. You can see some of the screenshots here. And again, we're now in phase one, the pilot phase, and phase two, the open sourcing phase, is premised on the code uplift, so getting all of the Alloy code into GitHub. And the next step would be the releasing of the code. So Goldman is currently working on getting the code ready, then we'll get it up to GitHub, probably in a private repo for a bit then stage it and, and then convert it to a public repo. And that's when the code release will happen. <coughs> Sorry. In this first uh, open sourcing wave, what's going to be released is the SCLC. And then uh, later in early 2021, we'd be releasing the second wave of, co of code, which would include uh, Cube, Graph, and Services. And as you can see on the screenshots, we're linking the different deliverables and milestones of the roadmap to the corresponding issues in GitHub. So you can all see how it's working and moving forward. And the idea behind this is also to start creating the structure of Alloy operating as an open source project now, so that once we open source it, we already have some momentum and are doing this kind of stuff in the open source way. So that's it for Alloy today. We're really excited about the great progress. And please feel free to reach out to Rob or myself if you'd like to get involved or if you have any questions. Hey, Itana, can I add just one thing? Sure. I just wanted to, on the community call, acknowledge that Aitana is no longer an intern and now a full-time employee of uh, Finos as our manager of strategic initiatives. She has been a phenomenal add to our foundation, and uh, I just wanted to acknowledge that. And please be nice to Aitana because someday, <laughs> not too long from now, we'll all be working for her. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, Rob. <laughs> thank you Rob, for chiming in and thank you Atana. I, I, I want to echo Rob's word. You're, you're doing a fantastic job and, and thank you for the update. Um, on, on the Alloy stuff, I want to just say I'm, I'm really excited because um, 
I think the potential here, not only for collaboration on the code, once it's going to be open source, but the very fact that we're hosting a platform already where we're seeing several working groups already spinning on, um, spinning, spinning up and addressing real business problems, it does really bring together that connection of the technology value and the business value that we think open source can deliver. And that is very, I think, even more fundamental for us as a vertical financial services focused foundation. So, so again, kudos to the Goldman team and, you know, thanks everyone who's participating to the working groups. Um, we see this being a, a, a very successful ecosystem moving forward. Thank you. Uh, moving on. Uh, uh, the next project is next focus project information that we are exploring uh, is more fear. Uh, so, uh, Stephen, you want to give us an update? Stephen Goldman from uh, Morgan Stanley. Do we have Stephen on the line? It is muted. Hello. Am I unmuted? Yes, we can hear you. How are you? Okay. I'm all right. How are you? Good. Great. So uh, Morpher, Morpher is a, a set of tools for application modeling and for modeling and working with business logic. Um, we found that it has good applicability across our industry and thought that this would be a, a great open source um, contribution. Um, as, as mentioned, we're in the pre-formation stage, which means that we've done a series of demos. Uh, we're happy to do more demos or discuss this any further if anybody's interested in talking to us. Um, and uh, very excited in embracing the, uh, the open source model and the FinOS model for this. Um, so we're uh, uh, welcome to contributions. The link is on the, on the page here, uh, so anybody who's interested Please go check that out and uh, drop us a line and let us know. That was, thank you so much, Stephen. I really appreciate that. And um, again, I, it's great to see, as I was saying before, financial institutions uh, uh, starting to lead the charge in terms of, of contribution. And again, Morphir is already an open source project. If you have the deck with you, uh, um, you can click here on the link, it's on GitHub. The goal, of course, is, uh, as we know, it, it's, it's different to have a project on GitHub versus bringing it under a foundation where, uh, um, you know, we create a level playing field for all of our community. Uh, um, so hopefully uh, uh, there is enough interest to bring this project in. And please, if you have uh, um, interest, feel free to reach out. We'd love to hear more from you. Uh, we think there is also potential uh, here for the open source FinRag uh, initiative that we are bringing forward. So thank you so much, Stephen, uh, for the update. Sure. Next on, um, DevOps mutualization. Um, this is uh, an initiative that was, again, actually brought up uh, for uh, 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 Morgan Stanley board member, Doug Katz, and actually our vice chair. Um, so James, our director of community, do you want to take it away? Yeah, um, absolutely. So firstly, it's uh, really great to see so many people on the call this afternoon. Thank you, um, everyone, for being here. So if you're somebody like me who's been involved in digital transformation within banking um, or has um, a DevOps team, you know, that actually works within your engineering teams, then um, DevOps mutualization will be a project that you'll be interested in knowing about. Um, now, if you've worked within that space, you'll know that um, efficiency, uh, quality and cost savings is something that every CTO is actually trying to drive out of their individual teams. Um, and what we found within finance is that um, DevOps is actually um, sometimes uh, underrepresented when it comes to um, what financial services companies actually need um, in order to drive more efficiency um, out of those types of tools. Um, so DevOps mutualization um, that I'm working with, you know, the FinOS team, plus also Dave and other FinOS members who have been invited to the initial group um, is a way to solve common engineering problems by providing a continuous compliance and assurance approach to DevOps that mutually benefits banking, um, auditors, regulators, 
whilst also accelerating DevOps adoption in engineering and fintech IT departments. So basically what we're um, trying to do is make every engineer more efficient by bringing those DevOps tools, DevOps skills, and the way that you either report using common standards or integrate using a common framework um, into the initial um, formation of the project. So we can actually get um, DevOps really motivated and motoring within um, finance. Um, and so some of the um, problems that we're suggesting, or you know, we've asked people to suggest include removing duplication of effort across financial services engineering, um, standardizing automated um, audit reports and, you know, the reports that go to uh, regulators and, you know, internal um, auditors and auditing teams. Um, also, um, supplying financial services integration requirements into the people who actually engineer um, DevOps tools. And so, DevOps mutualization is like a united voice um, for fintech and banking. Um, now, because we're forming this um, with um, Finos members initially, um, we have actually opened um, a GitHub issue that you can see at the bottom of this slide, um, which is within the community project within the Finos organization. Um, and it's issue 44. And so even though this initial formation of this project is being done with you know, members um, within the group, anyone can actually put their ideas and thoughts into issue 44. And so feel free to go in there and put down your thoughts about how we can make DevOps more efficient in finance. Um, and then, then I'll bring it into the group and we'll discuss it. And then we'll be prioritizing our top two or three initiatives. Um, or you can email me at jamesmcleod at finos.org. So yeah, I, I hope that um, I hope that explained DevOps mutualization. Thank you, James. Uh, yeah, it definitely does. And I just want to add, um, at this point, we're really seeking for you know initially you know an initial charter for this group, um, and and really how we we'll continue to exist within Finos, whether it's a project or. An, on ongoing working groups, but I think the goal is uh, we we this is potentially very huge, a very big area of collaboration. We think having every firm is going through uh, uh, the, the the DevOps journey and encountering similar challenges that are specific to regulated industries. So, you know, we'd love to hear your feedback, uh, whether you are a software vendor whether you are a, a financial institution, primarily on what the challenges are. So please uh, uh, don't hesitate to put your comments on that issue reaching out to James. Next on, it's one project that we think has a, a huge potential, especially as we have joined the Linux Foundation. And of course, we have a much closer relationship with uh, you know, sister foundations like CNCF, the Cloud Native Computing Foundation. Um, this is the Cloud Service Certification Project, which is an incubating project uh, focused for this quarter. And uh, I'm pretty excited to, to see that the project has made a lot of progress this quarter. So I want to ask uh, Jason Nelson from JP Morgan and Peter Thomas from Deutsche Bank to give us an update, folks. Uh, thank you very much. Um, I'll go quickly. Uh, basically, this started off as a project because of a common problem between many types of banks and other companies where we all want to move to cloud. We all need to make a move in a, you know, compliance and, uh, you know, meeting our regulatory obligations. And uh, this approach for what we're trying to do is just allowing us to work together because uh, this is kind of a non-competitive issue as far as uh, moving the cloud and using cloud. And working together, we can actually uh, share the work a little bit and also push back to the cloud service providers to actually um, do a little bit of this work for us. We shouldn't have to work so hard just to pay for their services and still have to um, configure them this much. So uh, the progress in this project has evolved where we have multiple participants uh, from different banks and uh, different types of banks around the world. And we're starting to get um, our first several pull requests, which is great. 
And this is about where I'm going to hand off to uh, Peter, and he's going to kind of talk about where we're going. Yeah, hi, it's um, Peter Thomas here from Deutsche Bank. Yeah, we we uh, Deutsche Bank have been participating in this for a few months. Um, we've been going through our internal processes um, to to um, allow ourselves to contribute, but we we've we've cleared those hurdles now and. So we're just starting to be able to contribute. What's interesting coming into this as a, as the sort of second contributor is you can sort of see the overlap, but also the differences between um, the original work that Jason's done and the um, and the structure and things that that we have that are our, our uh, content. So we've been working quite closely together to to reformat and agree the template structures of the things. That we're doing, but yeah, my my we have a we have a view uh, uh, focused more on Azure. Um, uh, Jason's uh, primarily focused on, on, uh, on AWS. So we see that these two things are sort of complementary in building up the uh, the uh, assets sort of side by side. But we we're coming across and and sort of our reason for wanting to get involved in this is that the there are the set of useful things that that uh, that that are the concerns. Uh, identity and access, network security, data, uh, localization, GDPR, these sorts of things. They're just they're standard things that everybody just seems to have to sort out. And the solution to them is generally the same um, uh, within within a cloud platform. So the ability to pull uh, to pull the thinking, to pull that knowledge, and to sort of share from each other is is really valuable. So yeah, so we've been actively engaged in here for a month or two. Um, and and I think um, you know our focus now is on starting to build out the Azure uh, the Azure content on here alongside the uh, the AWS one. Um, on on the screen you can see that there's a couple of our our, our current issues. So um, around uh, event bridge in AWS, um, how what sort of common services in Azure that we would want to document, um, and then um, some specific services like uh, blob storage and Postgres within Azure that are initial focus. Um, if there's anybody else um, on the call today who's interested in participating, um, please let uh, James know, and he, we can we can coordinate it that way. Um, but that would be great. Uh, I think that's it, Jason. Anything else you wanted to add? Uh, no, that that was great. I mean, yes. Uh, please check out the uh, GitHub and see the type of issues that we're requesting help on. And if there's anything else, there's a third leg as well for uh, Google. So if anybody wants to join in on any of those three platforms, uh, we definitely appreciate the help. Thank That's you, it. Jason, and thank you, Peter. Uh, again, this is this is amazing to see. I think um, just just opening up. Uh, to the community, uh, this is a project that I think that is uh, uh, room for really any w contributor, um, whether you work for a financial institution, whether you work for a cloud provider, whether you work for a system integrator who probably get to solve these problems over and over again at their different customers. Um, this project has a huge potential for everyone. So. And we think more broadly for the industry. So, if you have, uh, you know, if you happen to have expertise in these areas, if you are working on this type of projects, please uh, uh, let, check out the the GitHub repositories, the the issues that are open, as well as the mailing list. Uh, you can reach out to the to the whole group here. So, great to see two banks collaborating, and hopefully, we'll see more over the next months. Thank you again, Peter and Jason. Next on, uh, David Watkins for Waltz. Very excited. This is a new contribution to the foundation uh, uh, for the last couple of months, a very mature project. So, David, you want to take it away? Uh, yeah, thanks. Uh, yeah, so uh, as mentioned, Waltz has recently been uh, sort of contributed to the FinOps Foundation and has become a focus project. So, we're move, trying to move from um, incubating to activation. So as part of that, uh, I've been working quite extensively with James uh, and going through the activation criteria, uh, which is the issues I'll be, uh, tracked on GitHub uh, for all to see. Uh, a large part of that is actually just mapping some of the existing practices and approaches that we're using within Waltz, as Waltz is a fairly mature open source project. 
and making sure those align correctly with the FINOS uh, practices and approaches. Um, we are continuing with our, our steady stream of releases. Um, a couple of days ago, um, 1.25. I think that happened yesterday or the day before. I'm actually on holiday at the moment, so <laughs> my team in Deutsche Bank sorted that one out. Um, we've been recently doing a bit more in terms of reaching out to the community. So we did a brown bag session with uh, a joint brown bag session with Finos and some members of our team uh, talking to NatWest about how uh, how better they can use uh, tools like Waltz. They're already a user, uh, but we've shared some of our sort of uh, approaches to how we're using it within Deutsche Bank. Um, James has been setting up as well a bit of a cross bank uh, communications uh, to help us uh, to facilitate that sort of joint development uh, as uh, banks like NatWest get increasingly involved. We're seeing quite a few pull requests coming from them. Um, the, the documentation we got mentioned there, I mean, that's just uh, basically housekeeping. Uh, looking to the future, um, again, working with NatWest, uh, they're keen on getting a Docker image uh, up and running. And that's something that we're very, we've been looking at uh, quite a lot in the last few weeks and months is looking at how we can really smooth the onboarding ex uh, experience. Uh, Waltz is actually quite a fairly big beast. Uh, has quite a lot of dependencies, quite a lot of things that you need to have installed. So we're really looking at some of those requirements and making sure it's as easy as possible, A, for adoption and trying out the project, and B, for new developers who would want to perhaps contribute code and features to the project. Uh, further to that uh, is uh, basically continuing with the sort of community outreach so we're looking to set up some virtual meetups and doing some podcasts, perhaps with the wider team within Deutsche Bank, uh, to show that it's not just uh, myself running the project. You know, it, it, there is a team backing this thing up. Um, yeah, that's pretty much it. Well, thank you, David. And um, two things I want to call out here. One is this is a, a very much your you, you called it the big beast. I, I would call it a, a very mature project. Um, so we're really proud that you made the decision to, to bring it under Finos. And I think there is wide applicability, as you said, there are already other firms using it, which again, just for the community, we as Finos team really look at that as a sign of uh, uh, really delivering value and mutualization when, you know, the, the, the final goal for us is when a piece of code is actually shared across multiple institutions in production. So. Um, Please check out Waltz. Uh, I'm really pleased to hear, as you know, with my with my open source developer Halaton, that you're looking to make the, you know, out of the box experience for for developers contributing to the project and using the project easier. Uh, I think that's going to go a long way, uh, and I look forward to see this project active. Thank you. Um, and last but not least. Uh, Probably doesn't need introduction. I think all of you should be familiar with our FPC3 project. It's an active project that's been continuing uh, uh, producing valuable releases. Um, so I would like to ask Nick Kolba, uh, one of our uh, more sort of longest standing contributors and, and one of our board directors, as well as the uh, uh, lead for the FPC3 projects to give, give us an update. Hey, thanks, Gab. Can you hear me okay? Of course. Hi, Nick. Terrific. Hey. Um, so, hello, everyone. Uh, just going to talk a little bit about what's been happening in FDC3 land uh, this quarter. Uh, as Gab mentioned, we are been a project in Finos since Finos began. Um, so, we're fairly mature, and uh, we've... Um, had actually a lot going on this quarter, uh, being a focus group, which has been uh, terrific. Uh, at the beginning of the quarter, we released FTC 3.1.1. Uh, so a lot of the um, focus project kind of activity has been around promoting 1.1. And, and we really, the goals for that is to really drive momentum around adoption uh, as well as driving momentum around contrib contribution as we uh, 
work towards uh, beginning the one two process. Um, so with one one, we saw over 10, con 10 firms contributing to that standard. Uh, I wanna just give uh, special shout outs to OpenFin, Adaptive, FactSet, JP Morgan, ChartIQ, Glue42, and NatWest who really made large contributions into that effort, um, both uh, in terms of contributing uh, uh, to the actual standards themselves, as well as just support with logistics, documentation, and, and just getting things out the door. Um, we also saw the contribution of the first open source FTC3 implementation from the community uh, into Finos this quarter. That was the FTC3 Chrome extension. Um, and you can find that on the uh, Finos GitHub. It would be great to uh, get some uh, more eyeballs and activity around that. Um, so, and then finally, as we wound down the 1.1 release at the beginning of this quarter, and we've started the 1.2 uh, standards process. Um, so a big goal um, and a lot of activity around the group has been to streamline the organization to make it more accessible and even easier for our community to get involved and to contribute. Uh, some of the things that we've done working with the Finos team uh, this past quarter have been to uh, move FTC3 onto a project structure. So with the deprecation of programs, we, we kind of rejig some of FTC3's governance to uh, be much simpler and project-based. Um, we also moved all of the FTC3 materials to GitHub, which again, just gets everything in, in one place and keeps things a lot simpler, makes it easier for us to track. Um, and we also combined all of our working groups into a single standards focus group. Uh, and this is great uh, because it means fewer meetings, fewer mailing lists, fewer distractions, uh, and just a greater level of accessibility for people coming in to FTC3. So throughout the rest of the year, we're gonna be focused on getting the one, two standards set as well as continuing to improve and uh, support the tooling uh, that we make available for FTC3 and for the whole community. Uh, and uh, there's gonna be exciting things like more work around the Chrome extension, as well as demo apps um, and uh, greater levels of documentation and example code that we wanna put out there. Uh, so, and just to wrap up, I want to um, uh, just give a little call out to the community to say that, uh, so first of all, it's been an incredible journey so far, and we know that there's an enormous number of organizations out there using FTC3, and even more, they're looking at it. So uh, one of the things that we really want uh, to ask everybody to do is if you're using FTC3, please let us know. Uh, if you can get listed as a uh, implementer of FTC3 on our website, uh, even better uh, on top of that, if you're feeling very enthusiastic, would be to work with Finos to produce a case study so that we can really get the business value of FTC3 out there and documented, which will just uh, encourage more organizations to adopt the standard, which of course will just make this standard stronger uh, and more valuable. Uh, and then finally, uh, we're really, again, we can never get enough contribution. So if you have some bandwidth, contribute, and this can be as simple as operational support, things like code examples, things like documentation. It doesn't mean that you have to uh, contribute a new standard to the group. So with that, I wanna uh, thank everyone and uh, give it back to Gab. Thank you, Nick. We are, we're really proud of uh, hosting FDC3 and the progress that you as a team have made and, uh, you know, will continue helping. Um, I think it's really important the call out that you did to uh, um, implementers to let themselves known 
um, I, I completely agree that that really helps, um, you know, raising raising the profile of the standard and raising uh, the amount of adoption. So thank you. Um, and with that, we're done with the focus projects, but we have a couple of more updates on our uh, um, community uh, um, things that you might want to be on the lookout for. Actually, Nick sort of hinted to to the continuous work that we do to simplify our uh, uh, tooling and our governance. So, James, do you want to give a quick update on the, the first three sections here? Yeah, absolutely. So this is actually tipping his hat to um, the to ODP, um, where both Mao and the team have been working hard to really improve the efficiency of our um, Finos project teams. So the first three things are um, areas where there have been enhancements to the way that we work and the way that we actually keep everything um, either more efficient or more united. And the first is the quality and, and compliance improvements that we're actually going to start rolling out across all teams. Um, and what this is, um, within uh, each project team, there are certain ways that we would like um, project teams to be setting up their repos and, you know, kind of adding um, badges to, you know, readmes, et cetera, that normally you can only um, maintain by doing a review, which is a, a manual step. Um, but as part of ODP and our ongoing initiative to, you know, keep everything automated and fast, um, we've automated a quality and compliance report um, that actually um, will post a GitHub issue into project um, uh, GitHub issues. Um, so you can then prioritize it on your backlog and the project team can then go through and resolve all of the inconsistencies of, on their own. And so keep an eye out for any issues that get raised on project team backlogs. Then um, in order to get engineers coding quickly, for every um, person who's been given um, or has signed a Finos um, CLA, whether that's a CCLA or an ICLA, um, we're actually automating the next step of inviting those participants into Finos um, into the Finos GitHub organization. So rather than sign the CCLA and then wait to be invited into the GitHub organization, um, we've got a, a, a automated process that will actually fire off that notification to you. And so um, if you are signing a CCLA, um, you should receive a notification into your email from GitHub that actually invites you into a GitHub team um, within the um, GitHub, um, within the Finos organization on GitHub. Um, and then finally, um, in order to um, remove all of the context switching that we have between GitHub, our projects and Confluence, um, we now have the ability to manage all of our meetings, agendas, minutes and actions. Um, from within GitHub issues rather than from within um, the Finos wiki, which is Confluence. Um, and what this actually includes is a way for us to um, register people um, within meetings using people's GitHub profiles. And if you've been on cloud service certification or ODP um, or FTC3, you would have noticed that people are actually saying hello in comments. And this is so... Um, Number one, we, we can actually educate people how to get involved in open source, you know, through this type of action. And then we can actually start recording the people who are on the call using automation rather than having to, you know, scan pages. Um, and so if anybody wants to um, have this enabled on their projects, just um, email help at finos.org where myself and Mal will be able to enable it for you and actually show you the project team how to utilize it and make use of it. And so they're the three things that um, we've been working on in ODP that we would like to roll out to the rest of the teams. Back to you, Gab. Thank you, James. Um, I want to plug one more thing before I give a quick update on the on the governance. Um, in the spirit again of removing friction, as we know, even though we think this quarantine has accelerated the the, the rate of um, you know accessibility of some of our remote tooling, we certainly want to reduce the, the surface of complexity here. And so in the spirit of, again, the simplification, we actually move more and more of our collaboration out of the wiki into GitHub. Um, 
For those of you who are familiar with the Finos PMC repo, we have just uh, rebranded it into our community repository. In it, we're going to see appear uh, a lot of our governance. Uh, uh, we, that's where we manage our RFC for you folks. Uh, uh, again, this is going to become the place where more and more we ask for your input and we manage anything that is not project specific, that is foundation related, that is community related, that is governance related. On this note, just a quick plug. We'd love your input on how we name uh, um, the Open Sourcing Financial Regulation Initiative. We are really going back and forth on our names. Um, I have plugged this issue in the first slide of the deck. We'd love to get your input on how we name uh, one of our strategic initiatives. Uh, more and more, please keep an eye on this repo. You might want to start it or watch it to get updates. Uh, because we'd really want your input moving forward. So I wanted to just plug one and then spend maybe one minute uh, or two on the governance uh, and see if you folks have questions. So I do have one more announcement, actually, Gab. It was the very last bullet on that deck about Plexus, and it's more of an announcement. Um, so just to let people know that um, the Plexus Interop um, project has actually moved into the Finos GitHub organization now, just in the same way as FDC3 did. Um, so for anybody who knows um, the Plexus Interop um, repository within the Plexus Interop um, organization, you will now find that within the GitHub organization, um, the Finos GitHub organization. And the microsite URL has also changed to plexus.finos.org. Um, thank you, Gab. Sorry about that. No worries. Thank you, James. Um, so just quickly as an update, um, you all know, or should know, I hope, that we, earlier in the year, in order to simplify our governance, we have worked with the board to deprecate the, the concept of programs as a governance structure in our community. Um, that was approved by the board in April, and then I personally worked with all the programs throughout May. Uh, you know, this was a deprecation, so they didn't have to disband. They could have continued operating, but all of the programs decided to continue as individual projects in recognition that, again, a simplification of our governance was uh, due and would help new contributors come on board more easily. So in April, with the board approval, the Finos team had also the, uh, was authorized by the board to make the necessary changes to the governance. We are trying to keep the changes to the minimum, but to provide a very concise um, and really flexible version of our governance that you as project teams can evolve uh, um, independently, of course, always according to the open source and transparency principles that uh, govern our community. So just to give you a visual for those of you uh, who prefer that, this was our governance, you know, program based uh, until last year. As we remove programs, of course, there is a pretty big uh, uh, void that we needed to fill. And so that's what we're doing. Right now, we are in the stage where the Finos team uh, uh, approves and nurtures projects. Uh, um, as well as then report up to the board, we will use the focus project framework that we uh, uh, use today uh, to really focus the feedback that we bring up to the board. But the expectation is that every project will continue reporting to the board on a quarterly basis. Um, I've mentioned the idea of introducing a technical advisory council, and this is something that we're going to explore with the governing board as we form it uh, next month. Um, I've had thanks to all of you who raised your hand to participate to the TAC. I think for me, the next step that is really understanding whether there is commitment from financial institutions who would, again, really lead from a requirements standpoint. Um, so for now, we are in this stage and we'll be exploring the creation of a TAC. So more specifically, what you can expect is something right now, our governance is really spread out through uh, policies in the website, uh, a whole lot of pages on the wiki. Uh, we are actually uh, uh, 
dumbing that down to really a single project governance template which should fit a contributing .md file and will live in every project. Uh, again, you shouldn't expect many changes from how we've run the community right now. It's really just simplifying it and putting it in a single place. And the goal will be for every project to be able to change that uh, uh, if they want by majority vote. Um, in the new community repo, we are consolidating, we're really moving our governance and the hub and the entry points for our governance in our community repo. So uh, expect some updates there. And as I mentioned before, of course, uh, let's not conflate governance structures with community building structure and taxonomy. So we're actually building a new taxonomy, what we call a project landscape. Um, if you're familiar with the Cloud Native Computing Foundation landscape, we're using the same framework. Um, we will, of course, ask you, this will be all done in GitHub. We will, of course, ask you to help us not only adding projects, uh, to the to the landscape, but really how we categorize and present and message. This will be the central point that we can all use uh, to message around the projects in Finux. Uh, we have a few additional open items, um, which we'll be discussing with the membership and governance committee over the next month. I'm not going to go into details there, uh, but just one thing you can expect this month is, as, as uh, uh, James hinted to, uh, a project reporting process. We want to make sure that it's largely automated and you guys don't have to spend much time on it, uh, but we want the first governing board to really have all reports for all projects out there. And with that, I have actually completed the presentation, uh, but we have eaten the time for questions. I might have time for one. I don't know if there are questions uh, in the chat, I don't see the chat right now. Um, Al, is there any question uh, that came up in chat? King. Nothing that is actually specific to each of the group, no. Anyone else? Any final questions before we wrap then? So the only thing that I'd like to add is if um, anybody on the call is interested in joining any of the projects that you've seen today, then please feel free to email me at james.finos.org and I'll do an introduction um, because we're always looking for contributors. Thank you, James. So I really appreciate all of you joining and, and a special shout out to the project leads uh, who, uh, uh, you know, are really driving some really interesting initiatives within us. Uh, and with that, uh, please stay safe. Uh, if you want to look for call to actions, the first slide has a couple of ideas for you. Um, I hope to see the activity growing even more this summer where hopefully we will all have some more time. Um, so hey, thank you so much. Hey, 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 Gab. Sorry, one last thing uh, regarding training and learning. If people have, just to reiterate what Gab said earlier, if you have any questions on that, we actually now have an alias sent up: learning at finos.org. Learning at finos.org. So, if you're interested in training and learning, or have any ideas or topics you'd like to see either Finos or the wider Linux Foundation take on, please don't hesitate to send that to us. Learning at finos.org. Thanks. Good job. Great plug. Well, thank you so much for your time, and we'll talk to you hopefully earlier, but definitely in a quarter from now. Thank you. Have a great summer.